Half in the bag. I'm filled with gas. Boy, oh boy, I can't believe we planned that daring escape from Mr. Plinkett's house after he had his duct tape to the TV. Yeah, it was a grand adventure filled with many, many memorable characters and exciting moments, and it didn't rely at all on, on past references. Don't you agree, Jay? Absolutely. It was a, a standalone adventure. It's a shame that we did not film it. That's true. What? Hi, I'm uh, Rich Minersky. I'm the Milwaukee City Building Inspector. I'm here to make sure that your licenses are valid and that this building ah, is up to- fuck it. Let's just talk about Rogue One. X-Wings. Death Star. Grand Moff Tarkin. TIE Fighters, Mon Mothma's back, Princess Leia, Admiral Akbar. Oh, no, 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 that was somebody else. It was a different Mon Calamari. Oh, I thought they cast the same actor and he just gained a bunch of weight between the last film oh. and this one. Oh, no, Admiral Akbar's not a real person. Alderaan! <laughs> Ad -Ad Walkers! We go back to Yavin 4. Remember the Rebel base? I clapped. I clapped when I saw it. I clapped when I saw Darth Vader. ATSTs. ATSTs. Lucasfilm logo. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, but no title crawl. Oh, well. I applauded it for being different. It broke new ground. <laughs> <laughs> TIE Fighters as well as X-Wing! You'll be dead guy! And Pundu Boo Boo! Panda Babu! You mean butt face? Lightsaber! Jimmy Smiths! Basil Oregano, played by Jimmy Smiths! He's Princess Leia's non-biological father! He got blown up on Alderaan! Alderaan! That's the planet that gets blown up! ATSTs, ATSTs! C3PO and R2D2 showed up and I clapped! I clapped when I saw them too! I clapped because I know Star Wars! I know what that is! This is Gold Leader, we're starting for the target shaft now! Grandma Tarkin! Lightsaber! Blue Milk! Lightsaber! Star Destroyers, I'm gonna come! Did you clap at any of the new moments and memorable characters? Were there any? No! I clap when Darth Vader turned on his red lightsaber. Holy shit, there was a red lightsaber and he used the force! Oh my god! It's finally here, the beginning of the end of your life. A new day has dawned. One in which we get a new Star Wars film, or two, every year until we're all dead. The first one is called Rogue One. Do you remember things that were in Star Wars? Me too! Felicity Jones stars as Jin Erso. Diego Luna stars as Calrissian Andorian. Moblon Morpon stars as Guvan Dupan. Plegnon Famvon stars as Blam Supplebutt. John Quinn Blabo stars as Zorgla Famblacken. <laughs> hey guys, what did Kathleen Kennedy say to Gareth Edwards after Rogue One got the green light? What? You're all clear, kid. Now let's blow this thing and go home. Is that the review? Are we done? What did you think of Disney's Star Wars Rogue One A Star Wars Story? By Disney. As whatever, it was fine. I, I was I was incredibly bored for the first hour because <laughs> because there's uh, uh, no characters. That's the problem. It's yeah. incredible. It's an incredibly standard action adventure story. Go to places, run from things, shoot at things. Well, the biggest hurdle the movie had to overcome is the story itself because who cares? How they got the plans to the Death Star? That was my biggest thing is like, well, spoilers, they get it. <laughs> so I was like, well, okay, the only thing that they can do to overcome that is to have really interesting characters that we like and care about as they go on their adventure to get the plans to the Death Star, and they didn't do that. These characters are boring. Uh, this one 
This one got Star Wars wrong, in my opinion. Um, How did it get Star Wars wrong? It got the fan version of Star Wars right. It got Star Wars wrong. It was the greatest Star Wars fan film ever made. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna say that too, because it looked and felt like a fan film. Yeah. Because after Star Wars, all three films were done, everyone's like, hey, you know, that's badass. The Walker things are badass. That's badass, that's badass. Star Wars didn't say they were badass. They were just in the movies. Afterwards, everyone said they were badass. It's like a Boba Fett effect. Yeah. And what, the AT-ATs weren't in Empire because that's a badass concept. They were in there because, well, we need a thing in the snow that's yeah. a threat, that's a threat. Right. You can't just keep doing movies that feel like Star Wars every year because then it definitely will get old. So I don't will blame it, though? Them. Look at the Marvel movies. At least the Marvel movies all have different characters. Every single Star Wars movie has to have Stormtroopers, TIE Fighters. They have to have all of these same things. At least yeah. the Iron Man movie, you get Tony Stark doing a thing. In the Captain America movie, you get Captain America, and he has a different personality. In the Thor movie, sure. we get Thor, and he's an Asgard. Yeah. There's a similar tone, but there's very different characters, very different settings. Yeah, and that's the thing with like The Force Awakens. I know people can say it's uh, exactly the same story as uh, New Hope. Uh, they can say Mary Sue, Mary Sue, Mary Sue, all they want. Daisy Ridley is charismatic as hell in that movie. Yes. And she elevates what could be a slightly underwritten character with her performance. We need cover, quick! We're about to get some! Oh, yeah. uh, what's her name? Felicity Jones is so boring in this movie. Let's just get this over with, shall we? There's, there's nothing, like, they try to do a thing where there's like a relationship between her and her father, but we still don't know anything about her. Well, that was the, the, the driving force. I mean, her and her connection to her father is supposed to be the emotional core of the movie, but we don't know enough about either of them for that to really work. Well, we got that scene in the beginning when he said, go run and hide. Oh yeah, I remember when that happened. That was the scene, that was the whole scene. You just played it out in real time. Yeah. We didn't get a nice little scene where, like, uh, the father shows her how to do something on the farm and they have a little bonding moment. It was yeah. just immediately the bad guy from the Empire lands. And by the way, he lands really fucking far away. <laughs> and then they have to walk all the way to Does the he house. not know he has a spaceship? <laughs> But besides that. I'm okay with visual that, things like that. That was but. for drama and tension, and I was fine. I noticed that, and I was fine with that. <laughs> but that's the problem, is that this, this movie is like a, a drama facade. Yes. Where, where there's nothing behind it. I, I, the, the moment I realized the movie wasn't working for me was about halfway through, when, uh, uh, what's her name, Jin? Jin Urso. Jin Urso reunites with Forrest Whitaker's character. And they're having like their dramatic scene back and forth. And that was when I was like, wow, I'm bored. I realized I didn't care. And then the end of that scene is the, the city's being exploded and she's running away. And uh, Forrest Whitaker's like, I'm done running. And Rich and I both turn to each other almost at the same time. We're like, why? <laughs> He's gonna stand up to that giant explosion because that's the dr that's the drama it doesn't have to make sense character wise that's just the scene that has to happen now that was one of one like prediction i think uh, i don't know where what, what video it was in but that forrest whitaker will die like you know he goes, remember the cause or something like that Save the Save the dream. and i thought like I'm gonna jump on this grenade, like, or something like that. I'll, I'll hold them off, kind of like what K2SO did. Yeah. I'll hold them off while you guys do a thing, and I'll die. Oh no, he just stands there. He just basically just gives up. Yeah. And it, so it was like, uh, what? Oh, just get on the ship with them. <laughs> Why aren't you going? It's not like it's not like you're too old to move. You walk around. You can walk to the spaceship. He with would them. actually be useful because then he could back up Jin on the uh, the hologram thing that no one believes her about. Yeah, there you go. He yeah. would have been very useful. <laughs> or you have a rock like fall and, and break one of his robot legs, and they have to drag him. And yeah. you know, leave me behind. I'm just gonna slow you down. Go, go, go. Uh, so when talking about this film. It's hard not to think about The Force Awakens because they're so dramatically different. And looking back at The Force Awakens, yes, in hindsight, it's a complete clone of A New Hope. And there were some things in it that I thought were a little too wacky, but I was just craving that humor. They put the robot in there saying like, you know, he was the, what's that character from Guardians of the Galaxy who says like- Groot. 
Not Groot. The big guy oh, that says. Oh, Drax. Drax. Yeah, where he says things really literal. He says yeah. things really literal. I, I was thinking of Drax during those. It's like cheap humor. And so it's like, we'll have that in there as comic relief, but we don't need anything else. Everyone's miserable. It's very drab and depressing. Yeah. And there's no spunk. There's no heart. It's just, it's... It's dour. It's yeah. It's sort of a catch twenty two because you want to see new things in Star Wars. You don't want to see them reuse and recycle all the same old shit. So this one is trying to go for a different tone, but you do that and then it doesn't work as a Star Wars movie either. Here's, it's, see the Star Wars universe. Here's the dirty little secret. It's very small and very limited. Whenever Star Wars tries to expand outside of Tie Fighters, X Wing, Stormtroopers, and lightsabers, it's bad. You get you You're, get space about like books and all the extended expanded universe. Or the prequels, set. you get the space books. Or the prequels, yeah. Or you get oh, it's a gritty war movie. Where's the fun and adventure? Where's the exact same thing that we did before? It's Star Wars. I'm saying it is limited. It's a small little universe that they can't do much with. <laughs> it's true. It, it's it feels so expansive and endless, but really it's but very narrow. But they just narrow. keep dredging up the same shit. And and you know what? We always we we applaud those those Marvel movies because they're really good at riding the line and finding everything that works. And here, the, the, the think tank of studio executives said, let's do something different, but not too different. Right. Let's do something safe, but not too safe. Well, how about we do this story? And then we can still have all these things in that people remember, but it's different. Yeah. It's gonna be like a war movie. We can bring Darth Vader back again. Right, and we can have all the things that people remember, but they're there not because of fan service, they're there because they had to be there. And I think Gareth Edwards uh, is a fine action director. Oh yeah, I, was, I, was, I would say the, the final act of this movie, the actual uh, attempt to get the plans for the Death Star is all really well executed, I thought. I like the when the ATATs and they're shooting at them, and it's all mostly told from like the ground's point of view. Uh, really well executed action stuff, but by that point you just don't care. Yeah, it's muddled with we've got we've got to get the thing to the thing, and to do this thing we got to plug the plug into the wall. It, it's lots of scenes of people talking about what they need to yeah, do. Yeah, and it's, there's it's not really dry and dull. All, all the, uh, there, there's very few action scenes in the first hour or so, and the ones that are there aren't terribly exciting. Right, and, and then we get to the ending, and, and that's, the, that's something I was thinking about when watching the movie. I was like, okay, boring, boring talking. Everything's gray, people are talking about we gotta do a thing. Okay, there's an action scene. Oh, great, okay, that was keeping me slightly interested. Now back to boring talking. And this movie, the only memorable things in it are some of the action sequences. When you take a look at the original trilogy, Almost everything is memorable. Some of the least memorable things in the original trilogy are the action scenes. <laughs> I don't know, there's that, pretty ex- there's that pretty exhilarating lightsaber fight in A New Hope between Vader and Obi-Wan. Well, exactly. Like, <laughs> there's so many moments sprinkled throughout all three films. Yes, um, uh, Jedi has Ewoks, blah, 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 blah. But the Ewok village is memorable. Yeah. The, the t- Sarlacc pit monster is memorable. I mean, like... Harrison Ford is a charming fellow. Harrison Ford is a charming fellow. Princess Leia is a sassy lady. Guy, Guy McAccent is not a charming <laughs> fellow. Are you talking about the memorable character of Cassian? Was that his name? Yes. Oh, God, that was Cassio? Cassio keyboard? keyboard? He was, yeah. It's Cassian Andor, and I remember that because his name sounds like Calrissian Andor. 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 Yeah. And, uh, uh, that's a Star Trek reference. But Endor. Andor, Endor, sure. It sounds think, like Endor. We're Star Trek people, so. There let's... is a planet called Andor, which has the Andorians, which are the blue people of the antenna. But then there's the planet of Endor that has the Ewoks. That starts with an E. Sure. <laughs> but Star Wars has a history of mocking Star Trek in their character names, hence the Nemoidians. Oh, yeah. Where George Lucas said, that moron Leonard Nimoy, <laughs> I'm going to show him. <laughs> And boy, did he show him <laughs> with that phantom menace. Oh boy. And if you're gonna do these standalone movies like this, they should hold up on their own. And that's another big problem is that the only memorable things in this movie are things you remember from the original films. Yeah, it, it leans very heavily on that. And I think that's why I was more interested in the final act of the movie because it's loosely connected to something I care about, which is A New Hope. I know that the history of the story 
uh, the movie. It's the guy, there's a guy named John Knoll. I don't know if you know who he is. Uh, he, he wrote a story for this. He worked for ILM. He's the guy who's on the couch showing George Lucas like, like CGI Yoda. Oh, that guy? Yeah, his name's John Knoll. He and his, he's like a secret genius. He, okay. and, he and his brother created Photoshop. Oh, like, like he's he's a super smart guy, and he got in. He like right after he, I'm, I made Photoshop, the most amazing computer program ever. <laughs> I'm gonna go work for ILM. Worked his way up in ILM, and he said, you know, it would be a really cool story around like the time of George Lucas was like, hey, what 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 are the what's the backstory of who found the re, the plans for the Death Star? And then you know it's like George Lucas went along, and then they sold it, and then oh, I'm gonna pitch this idea. Wow, I didn't realize there was that much history to this. Yeah, it goes huh. back a little ways, and so he's the guy who came up with the story, the guy who was, ran the computers. <laughs> <laughs> he was, that was his official title. Well, if he story. ran the computers, then why does, why does Tarkin look like he fell down the uncanny valley? <laughs> oh! I think this is like, you, you're fucked if you do, and you're fucked if you don't. I, I or think, a rock in a hard place, or other metaphor. I, I think there's a few simple things you could do to make this movie much better, which is one, pull out all the fan service stuff. Uh, the last two minutes of this movie are like embarrassing. It was a fan service ejaculation. Yeah, yeah, cut all that stuff out, cut all the little nods, the you'll be dead guy shows up, pull that out, pull out C-3PO and R2-D2. Oh Make yeah, it, that was awkward. It, that was really bizarre. It was just distracting as well. It was distracting, was. but, but of course everybody applauded because it's like dangling a shiny object in front of a cat. But yeah, cut out all that stuff, uh, make the characters a little more interesting, maybe have less of them, uh, beef up uh, Felicity Jones's character, and just make it make it as simple as the story is as the story should be. Because yeah. it's a very simple story. We gotta go here and steal these plans. Boom. Right. But they have to pump in all the outside elements too. We needed we needed the kind of backstory that uh, what's her face had. She had a backstory and like not really a backstory, but we got to see her like daily life on the planet. And you know, so we, but the Jin character is like five minutes out. She's a little girl. Go hide in, in the bunker. Yeah. And Forrest Whitaker will come get you. That was her backstory. <laughs> hide in the bunker and Forrest Whitaker will come get you. And so Well, we can all relate to that. Um, the, 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 the Chinese men in this, can we talk about them and, you know, why they were in the film? Yeah, yeah, because they wanted to show the movie in China? Yes, that's, that's about it. it. <laughs> I mean, that scene when, when Donnie Yen, like, like, kicks ass with his, like, staff and beats up the stormtroopers, that was pretty great, but he never did it again. <laughs> well, it's neat because it's something new. Considering how everything else was a gritty war drama, the blind Chinese guy who kicks ass and the comical tough guy with the machine gun, kind of out of place in that. You have Saving Private Ryan and then you got these like, people who are kind of like fantasy characters in Saving Private Ryan. Keep the one Chinese guy, the blind Chinese guy. He has some kind of, you could say the force every now and then. Just keep He's him your there. spiritual connection. Keep him there as a spiritual connection. Uh, and then have Jin Erso and then maybe one other character. Forrest Whitaker, he's the guy who helped her when he, she was young and he was a rebel guy, but maybe he's disillusioned now. And she says, sure. come on, I'm, I'm grown up now and uh, the, I can help the, the rebel, rebellion. Forrest Whitaker, Jin Erso, blind Chinese. That's all we need. <laughs> Cut the rest. And, and, and maybe add in some kind of scene where Jin and, and Calzone? <laughs> have like a reason to like each other. Where's their bond from? Yeah, yes, yes. There was, a, there was a slight moment when he said, you know, we're not all, you're not the only one who has suffered loss. Yeah. I've been doing this since I've been six. Yeah. I expected a, a little scene where they sat down, maybe in the side by side in the bathtub, in a wide <laughs> shot, with a lot of negative space. <laughs> and, he's, and he tells the story of his wife and children, how they got gunned down by stormtroopers. Oh, a backstory? A, a bath story. A bath story. <laughs> um, 
And he tells the story and, and it's like tear jerking. Sure. And then they fall in love maybe. Am I the only one who wants a little love in my movies? There, there kind of was in this, but it, it wasn't does. earned at all. It wasn't earned no. and it wasn't established or it, it, it just sort of yeah. happened at the end. Plus he murdered people. I don't blame them for trying to, to do something a little bit more serious. Yeah. It feels silly when you have the Private Ryan scenes and they're stormtroopers. It makes it feel silly, but... And little pigmen shooting guns. Little pigmen shooting guns, <laughs> but I don't blame them for trying. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I think uh, a lot of people sat down at a giant table and all talked about what was the safest and smartest thing to do. Uh, you don't want anything that's too similar to The Force Awakens. You don't want anything too crazy, too specific on one character. Like, they wouldn't have jumped right in with the the Yoda prequel, right. you know what I mean? The, like, yeah. You want to show, look at all the things you can do with this universe. Yes. We can tell a part of a story you've already seen before. Yeah, <laughs> you really can't do much. I guess we can't do much. Oh, oh fuck, we spent <laughs> four billion dollars. <laughs> oh, well, I would say, you, when you say don't take risks, and I guess we're gonna get into spoilers from here on out, like sure. why not? Um, I would say the ending is pretty risky of this movie. Just fucking killing everybody. Uh, you know what? A great time to release that around the holidays <laughs> so you can see it with your children. Yeah, yeah. It basically had the same ending as a Lars von Trier film, Melancholia, <laughs> where characters just await their demise. They could have very well just, Darth Vader just rounds them all up and just get in this prison. It's still better than like, like I hated the last couple minutes of this movie. It was mean, so stupid. You mean, when, uh, you mean when they cut to a wax sculpture of Carrie Fisher? Hope. That was the worst. That that was. Grandma Tarkin looked okay. I'm still what? very much. A, I'm not saying he looked great. I thought he looked okay. I think it's very. I, I think it's stupid he, that they did it. It was so fucking distracting. <laughs> it was. It no, was. You just find someone who looks even a little bit like him. Yeah. No. 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 I I'm totally against the idea of doing that. I thought the effects looked okay. You could tell it has that uncanny valley effect. But total yeah. uncanny valley. No, it was not Ca okay. Cast somebody else. It's not okay in the context of making the movie. I'm just saying the effects themselves look fine, but cast somebody else or just don't put him in there. We didn't need him. Yeah, find a way to write around it. Yeah, because I'm just thinking, I'm picturing like in 30 years, if Disney is still milking Star Wars, which they will be, are we going to get like CGI Mark Hamill? It's like how long, like make new things. Make new things, please. Can we talk about how there, the, uh, I remember I said, who, uh, what are next in that video that we made where Rich said, what are next? Remember when we, we were wondering about the TIE fighter that confronted Jyn oh, Erso this on, versus the, this, yeah. on the, the plank that wasn't in the film. That's right. A different TIE fighter that was shooting lasers and blew up the platform and it fell. I'm gonna assume that relates to reshoots, probably. I'm gonna assume so too. I would yeah. imagine that they reshot. Is that Darth Vader flying in that TIE fighter? Are you with me? This is a rebellion, isn't it? I rebel. If you continue to fight, rebellion is all that remains to me. You become the power that we are dealing with here. It's this kind of power. Uh, can we talk about Darth Vader and nope. uh, how he was weird? It was weird. It was weird. His voice sounds so old. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was like the the filtering of it was not correct. It, it sound, it, I know it was James Earl Jones, but it just didn't sound like him. Well, is that it? I, he's, he's getting up there. He's getting up there. That's true, but it was just the, the tone. I was, I was more distracted that it, it didn't, it looked like a Halloween costume. Like something <laughs> looked weird. And I don't know if that's just like in a contemporary movie scene that costume looks silly yes, and yes. we're just used to the old ones. And Because the original one was basically a Halloween costume. That's true. I, I have a hypothesis. The costume looks a little bit janky in this, possibly because they're trying to make it look more like it did in the first one when it probably wasn't as nice as it was in sure. Empire or exactly. Jedi. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that was the plan. I, I, even though in the first one you could see like fingerprints on it and like schmutz. <laughs> yeah. And this it was like, it, you know, they, they polished it a lot with the voodoo hide. <laughs> Um, <laughs> a little too much, uh, but yeah, it, it, they tried to make it look janky like the 70s, 1977 movie, but... That's sort of at odds with your, your gritty war drama. Yes, yes. <laughs> he, Darth Vader looks silly in it. I just know if I was Darth Vader, I would not want to live in a castle surrounded by lava, mm. given his history. I thought that was an odd choice. <laughs> Maybe it's just a reminder. Just a reminder? Yeah. 
Does he really? I think I would think uh, living in constant pain and wearing a suit would be a reminder. <laughs> maybe maybe it's a reminder of the last moment where he wasn't living in a suit in constant pain. Okay. All remember, right. remember when I was jumping around on floating lava platforms? <laughs> That's what lava makes me think about. They, they did reference Obi Wan Kenobi in this. Remember? They have to. They have, they to, have to. They have to hit all the beats. <laughs> All the meats? <laughs> all the meats. <laughs> all the meats. They hit all the meats. With a, with a side of blue milk. It's like the, the picture of the cow where it shows where all the meat cuts are. <laughs> it's all the Star Wars <laughs> elements you have to shove into your movie. Obi-Wan, R2-D2. <laughs> blue milk. What's the filet? What is that? What is on the cow? That's Darth Vader. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> It's not lightsabers? Well, Darth Vader has a lightsaber. Okay, okay. I guess Darth Vader is the porterhouse steak. Okay. Which has a fillet on it. And just the lightsaber itself is just the fillet. Okay. Hmm. What's what's the rump roast? Jar Jar Pinks? <laughs> uh, CGI Grand Moff Tarkin. <laughs> <laughs> CGI. <laughs> That's why I was kind of shocked by this movie. Like, not that it's a horrible movie, but they've been so smart with how they've handled the Marvel movies and making them consistently, at the very least, good. Yeah. That this feels like a big. I mean, I'm, this movie's going to make a billion dollars, whatever. But for me personally, it feels like a big misstep. Yeah. Well, they, this early on in them having the Star Wars property. It, it feels like an experiment. They're feeling around for what they can do with the Star Wars universe. It just seems way too early. But they're not taking big risks yet. Mm. Right. Yeah. They plugged in all their all their safe bets, and the only thing that they didn't like, I, I kind of looked at this and I'm like, uh, you know, I, I want to see it. I, I need to see it. It's Star Wars, but I, I don't want to watch a war movie. I don't want to watch some like, unless it's like some really slick, like cool spy movie, which they didn't do. Yeah. It was. It wasn't like. We're this. We're gonna assemble this like, like crack team of uh, people to break into. I thought they were gonna go on the Death Star, and yeah. and break into it and download the plans. And they're gonna. It's gonna be like Mission Impossible. Um, that would have been fun. That would have been, been neat. But then we we still have to have space battles, well, even in this small scale story. But where like you, you ever watch the Ocean's Eleven movies? I've never seen them. I know what they are. They're yeah. fun. They're fun. They got a Chinese acrobat in in the first one because he's the only guy who could fit through this thing and do a backflip onto this other thing sure. so that he doesn't trip this like security alarm. They're like, we need somebody who's four feet tall and weighs 70 pounds and who can do a backflip. So they find a Chinese acrobat and they hire him on their team. And they're, they're, all the characters are kind of funny and witty and sarcastic. And uh, I thought this was gonna be that. And I'm thinking like, okay, that, that, that everyone's lauding the K2SO robot. He's so funny. And I thought, Oh, you know, all these other characters, they're, they're going to be, I'm going to be won over by this film. Yeah. Won over by these characters. But it was just like, got to do the thing. We're going to die. Everyone's just going to die. There, there was no charm and there was no fun. And I think that's the stuff that's missing. Uh, Gareth Edwards, I don't know too much about him other than he made a dour and depressing Godzilla movie. Right. And That's kind of his thing. And he does it well. I think he's a talented filmmaker. I just, and I... It's so tough because I don't want to say like I just want the same type of Star Wars movie over and over and over But then at the same time when you do something like this, it's going for a different tone that doesn't work either no. So I it's it's I guess like what you're saying. There's just not much you can do with Star Wars the, This this was held up by two things uh, 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 It was a big remember this ex space explosions and battles and things but it was supposedly going to be propped up by two things one Jyn Erso's relationship with her father, and two, uh, we all need to fight the power. The empire's bad, we all need to, like the, the, her speech that she gives, you know? Like, really corny, even for Star Wars, I thought some of the speech yeah. defined in this was corny. Yeah, that could that kind of stuff, like we're oppressed by this system and we want to take it down, can be a really, really- You should be rooting for them. A really motivating subject matter, but in this it was just like, I don't care. Yeah. And I didn't care about the, the father-daughter plot. So instead of that, make it a fun spy adventure movie. <laughs> and have that hold the movie up. So-and-so's got to pretend to be an Imperial Admiral. Yes, ah. yes, yes. So they'll let him in the room, but he's got a masquerade during the party. Mm -hmm. They got a hologram, so his face kind of looks like, oh no, it's starting to malfunction. <laughs> Rich, Rich, you... 
got it. <laughs> yeah. You got it. That's the, when I saw Diego Luna in the Imperial uniform in stills. They didn't do anything. I thought that. that shit was gonna happen. Yep. What? They just walked around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the 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 hologram that's on his neck that uh, makes his face look like a yeah. CGI Grand Moff Tarkin. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been brilliant. Grand Moff, Tarkin, what's wrong with your face? <laughs> <laughs> you look like a, a circa 2016 CGI effect. <laughs> Nothing's wrong. Why does your neck keep sparking? Maybe that's why he looked like that in this movie. We're going to get a separate movie explaining that's someone else in disguise. Yes. Yeah, when, it, when it glitches, you get those lines that yeah. you always see in the oh, Star yeah, Wars yeah. holograms. Right, right, yeah. So many like fun, clever things about them getting into the Empire and getting to the center of the Death Star, wherever they keep the, the plan to download it. The computer core is in the middle. Yeah. They gotta get through all these obstacles to find it. Would have been fun. Instead it was like the Saving Private Ryan. Saving Private Ryan was a funner movie. <laughs> I'm gonna go watch Hacksaw Ridge. Get some joy. <laughs> joy from a film. Mommy, why are all the characters dying? I just, I just, I want to go to a theater on Christmas Day yeah. so I can overhear that conversation. Mommy, the funny robot's dead. <laughs> That's a whole nother story. Speaking of children, they had they had the premiere of the movie, but a week or so, two weeks before, they they invited. Well, it wasn't the premiere. It was like twenty five minutes. They, they invited some people to Lucasfilm to the Skywalker Ranch to watch twenty minutes, and. Uh, they invited, you know, your usual suspects of people in the film industry. Not, not tons of critics, but then website like fanboy critics. Website, website fanboy oh, yeah. critics. Yeah. And then they also invited lots of mommy bloggers. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this. It was called the, the Rogue One event, and there were a lot of mommy bloggers that went. And, and I was like, mommy bloggers. And it's like, I'm, I'm so and so, and I'm going to Lucasfilm to watch Star Wars. And it's like, I talk about children's toys and I talk about healthy meals for your tots. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? And, and I, I was like, oh God, their, their, their marketing team, their behind the scenes team are going, well, the trailer did not test well with mommy bloggers. And it, we're, gonna, we're gonna have a backlash from moms and kids. Moms are gonna say, I'm not gonna take my eight year old or six year old to see this because it's a violent fucking movie. Yeah. Let's win over the mommy bloggers. But Don't, we can't show the whole movie. We can't show the whole movie. <laughs> we can't show the part where, where Calrissian uh, Andor murders people. Let's show them the funny parts with the robot. Yeah. And I bet you it was 20 minutes of the funny parts with the robot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and so I'm curious to see like how this plays out over the initial release weekend uh, with all the mommies and little kids out there. Like you said, if you were a little kid and you watched this, it's pretty fucking depressing and scary. <laughs> you do if they break you? If you continue to fight. So many little tweaks. So many little tweaks. Yeah, that's the thing is like there's, there's this movie could have worked if they just toned down on the fan service. Toned down on the fan service. Tweaked the characters. Yeah. Added, added some humor. Cut I, out all the space battle shit. You can't. You can't take out the fan service. That's the license. I know, I know. But if you really, like, for a movie that kind of feels like it's taking chances by being dark and gritty and killing everybody, it still feels like it's not taking chances. It's a really weird anomaly. Like, I, it's hard to wrap my brain yeah, around. It, it, it is. It's, it's, a, it's a miss. It's not a hit. It's yeah. a miss. Uh, but it, it's going to please lots of bearded fat guys. Absolutely. Because, because uh, I heard them munching on popcorn, uh, opening candy wrappers in my ear. I heard lots of yes, yes. and that type of shit. It was it was bizarre it, masturbatory. Ad yes, yes. Ant Walker shows up for the first time. Oh man, you know that. It it was like being in a theater with a bunch of perverts watching porn. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck yeah, oh fuck yeah, it's Darth Vader. Yeah. When Darth Vader's lightsaber came out, I I heard so many shots. It was disgusting. Don't, did you? That is, that is an apt analogy. Yeah, That absolutely. is a very apt analogy. It's Star Wars porn. It's only a miss for us. The Star Wars fans want that. 
what they got. They want what they got. Yep, yep. It, it's just sad because it's not going to, it's not, it's, it's the Star Wars films, even the prequels, and the prequels and Force Awakens, this is the first one that doesn't play to a general audience. If you're if you're five or if you're 95, you can get something out of those movies in some way. This, if you're 35 to 38, <laughs> and you have a giant beard, and you grew up on Star Wars, and movies. you gr grew up on Star Wars movies, this know, is the Star Wars movie you want yes, to see. Yes, and you want to go, oh fuck yeah! When you see an ATST walking and shooting things, this is the movie for you. If you're a little kid and you want to be inspired and you want to uh, discover the magic of movies. Uh, go watch something else because this is a miserable nightmare. <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you just want a good story and you want good characters and you want something clever, that's what this lacked was cleverness. Rich's idea about uh, Diego Luna wearing a thing that <laughs> disguises him as a general so they could get past this. And there was nothing clever. It was just like, let's, let's, uh, let's have everything fight each other. Yeah. I don't blame them for trying something different. I no, just I, don't I, think it works. I applaud their efforts for trying something new, <laughs> uh, tonally, I guess. Yeah. But I think this proves that that doesn't really work. Yeah. It's a very well-made movie. <laughs> I Maybe. think the effects and uh, the, the look of the world are better than The Force Awakens. Maybe one of the other 12 Star Wars movies we can look forward to in the coming decade will prove us wrong. <laughs> <laughs> It all comes down to story and characters. We just want good characters and a good story. I think they tried to have, have good characters, but they were just too boring. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Rich? Yeah. You know, if, you already know if you like it or not. Just, you just, Star Wars, a, a recommendation Star Wars, Star Wars. is irrelevant. It's yeah. completely irrelevant. Well, Mr. City Inspector, what did you think of your inspection of Rogue One? City Inspector? Oh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, no, uh, your, your plot to distract me by talking about Star Wars has worked, and I have forgotten completely about the inspection. I'm going to go now. Okay, bye. I'm going to walk right into traffic. Oh. Because I'm so distracted by the Star Wars. There he goes. Oh my God. Did you hear that? It sounded like he walked right into traffic. It sounded like a car hit him. <laughs>